you to tell me why. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the untold story of Ezra Miller. Ezra is now facing some all new allegations and I feel like these take things to a different level. For this video, we need to talk about this American actor's early years, rise to fame, and their recent trouble behind the scenes. The youngest child of book publisher Robert S. Miller and dancer Marta Miller, Ezra Matthew Miller was born in New Jersey on September 30, 1992. Miller's foray into performance started as a means to overcome their childhood stutter. Miller learned to control their speech impediment by training as an opera singer at age six. I can sniff it out. They went on to sing with New York's Metropolitan Opera's Children's Chorus and performed in The White Raven, a five-act Philip Glass opera. Miller made their film debut in the 2008 Antonio Campos drama After School. You almost killed Dave. Do you realize that, Rob? There are a lot of people who think it should be expelled. It was around this time, at age 16, that Miller dropped out of school to pursue acting. Their most notable early role was as the titular troubled teen in We Need to Talk About Kevin, receiving a Critics' Choice nomination for Best Young Performer. You don't look happy. However... Miller further demonstrated their range as Emma Watson's stepbrother in The Perks of Being a Wallflower, garnering critical acclaim and a few accolades. You could write about us? Yeah. Call it Slut and the Falcon. Make us solve crimes. They were excited to play a, quote, strong, compassionate, and confident gay character, as it was around this time that Miller came out as queer. From a personal standpoint, they had first experimented with the same sex during their school days, describing themselves during this period as, quote, a really confused queer adolescent. Miller also described a scenario where they became romantically involved with a male friend, who eventually turned against them. I don't know what kind of sick shit you're trying to pull, but you better walk away right now. Nothing. Fine. Say hi to your dad for me. While filming Wallflower, Miller was caught with 20 grams of marijuana when pulled over for a busted brake light. What? You want me to lie? Maybe you'd enjoy a little time in the hole. Miller was fined $600 and received two disorderly conduct citations. But as long as this remained their only run-in with the law, any controversy would be forgotten in a flash. Speaking of which, Miller made their DCEU debut in 2016, cameoing as Barry Allen in Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad. No honor among thieves, eh? However, Miller got the most screen time as Credence Barebone in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. You can control it, Credence. I don't think I want to, Mr. Credence. These three films were among that year's 10 highest grossing releases worldwide. While 2016 was a monumental year for Miller, they were involved in a somewhat awkward incident at 2017 San Diego Comic-Con. Although Miller was there to promote Justice League, they garnered more attention when a fan asked if they were drunk. After Miller said that the Flash's fast metabolism prevents him from getting inebriated, the fan asked to smell their breath. Instead, Miller gave them a kiss, asking him how it smelled. Let me smell your breath. In November 2018, the same month they reprised their role in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, Miller came out as non-binary, saying, quote, Queer just means no, I don't do that. I don't identify as a man. I don't identify as a woman. I barely identify as a human. You know, a lot of the esoteric practices have really old understandings of queerness and, you know, the four genders in Navajo, the two spirits in, in Lakota. In the same conversation, they reflected on a Me Too experience in which an unnamed director-producer offered an underage Miller wine, believing they were making sexual advances. Miller has spoken out against harassment, but they still have not commented on a seven-second video that surfaced in April 2020. The video apparently saw Miller grab and throw a young woman to the ground by the throat at Prikith Kafios, a Reykjavik Iceland bar. Although some on Twitter thought the video was a prank, research suggested otherwise. Variety picked up the story, with one employee identifying the perpetrator as Miller, who was escorted out by the Prikith staff. 
Miller was reportedly confronted by, quote, quite pushy fans. This led to Miller grabbing the woman, who thought the actor was joking at first. According to the woman, she initially asked Miller about their flip-flops before noticing some wounds. When Miller claimed they were battle scars, the woman said, quote, just so you know, I could take you in a fight. She jokingly told Miller to meet up in the smoking area. Apparently, Miller took her more seriously than intended. The controversy died down by 2021 when Miller appeared in Zack Snyder's Justice League. Just gotta go faster than the speed of light, far beyond the speed of light. Gotta break the rule, Barry, and you gotta do it now. At the 94th Academy Awards, The Flash Enters the Speed Force was named number one in the Oscars Cheer Moment Twitter sweepstakes. Granted, if there's one thing that Zack Snyder fans are good at, it's orchestrating support on Twitter. Still, this boded well for Miller's first solo Flash movie, which wrapped filming in October 2021 after several delays. Are you in? According to an insider, among the various production problems, it was reported that Miller had been, quote, losing it on set and endured, quote, frequent meltdowns. While Miller wasn't yelling or acting violent, they seemed to be second-guessing what they were doing. If that wasn't reason enough to give Warner Brothers cause for concern, Miller kicked off 2022 posting a 49-second Instagram video threatening a North Carolina chapter of the KKK. Hi, um, this is Ezra Miller, uh, aka the Ben Galgools. The Mad Goose Wizard. While feeling animosity towards a hate group is understandable, people were mainly confused by Miller's words, especially when they called themselves, quote, the Bengal Ghouls, the Mad Goose Wizard. Okay, talk to you soon, okay? Bye! About three months later, Miller was charged with disorderly conduct and harassment following an obscenity-laced altercation at a Hawaii karaoke bar where they reportedly pulled a microphone from a woman and lunged at a dart player. Bail was $500, which Miller paid and was released. Miller's representatives have not yet publicly commented. During their arrest, Miller yelled at an officer for calling them sir, which conflicts with Miller's non-binary status. The officer says he was, quote, trying to be respectful, to which Miller replied, quote, if you fail to do that again, that is an act of intentional bigotry. Miller was released on a $500 bail, but this wasn't their only mishap in Hawaii. After the karaoke incident, a Hilo couple accused Miller of breaking into their home and stealing a passport, wallet, and other belongings. No charges have been filed yet against Miller for this latest incident. Later in April, around the same time the couple dropped their restraining order against Miller, the actor was arrested again at a traffic stop 20 minutes after allegedly throwing a chair at a 26-year-old woman's head in Pahoa. The woman received a cut on her forehead while Miller, pleading no contest, paid a $500 fine. Miller's Instagram account was deleted in June, but they weren't done sending Twitter into a frenzy. The parents of 18-year-old Takata Iron Eyes accused Miller of grooming their daughter. They're now filing for uh, court protection. They want a judge to issue an order of protection that, to keep Ezra away from Takata. <laughs> the two met when Iron Eyes was 12 and Miller was 23. Iron Eyes's parents claim that Miller allegedly gave their underage child illegal substances and influenced Iron Eyes to drop out of school to follow Miller. Iron Eyes, now going by Gibson, denied these allegations, while the authorities struggled to locate Miller to serve them. The two are supposedly still on the run together. Clearly, Takata is aware that her parents are trying to, to step in and get the court involved because uh, she posted a statement saying, uh, look, I don't need a conservatorship. I'm seeing a therapist. I'm doing OK. Uh, so this has clearly been a battle that's been happening for a while. Also in June, a Massachusetts mother accused Miller of acting inappropriately towards her 12-year-old child. Miller was allegedly armed and wearing a bulletproof vest at the time. The court order issued on Wednesday doesn't contain specific allegations, but did say it was issued with advance notice due to, quote, substantial likelihood of immediate danger of harassment. On top of all this, Miller reportedly flew a 25-year-old woman and her three young children to their ranch in Vermont. According to a report by Rolling Stone, firearms are left unattended in the ranch, and marijuana is smoked heavily in front of the children. The woman's one-year-old baby allegedly found a bullet and put it in her mouth. The concerned father claims that Miller paid to have the woman and her kids fly to Vermont after meeting them in Hawaii earlier this year. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.
You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Warner Brothers has reportedly held an emergency meeting to discuss Miller. Although a studio source denied this, WB will eventually need to decide what to do about Ezra. It's easy to misunderstand something when you hear it out of context. Why would I not know the context? I am the context. While Miller would be easy to replace in a future Fantastic Beasts film, The Flash is another story. Reshooting the entire film with a different actor is not practical or cost-efficient. No decisions have been made yet, but the film will likely skip Comic-Con. Things may calm down by the time The Flash is set to release on June 23, 2023. Otherwise, it's not like WB can just pull a flashpoint. I know we're all thinking the same thing right now. Who's gonna say it? I'm not gonna say it. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.